Hello and welcome to another episode of Canadian History X. So today we're going to be talking about probably one of the most innovative and influential creations Canada has ever contributed to, well, anything. We're talking about the Canada Arm. If you think about the Canada Arm, it's kind of the workhorse of the space shuttle program and it works very hard for the International Space Station. The International Space Station, after all, is probably one of the most important creations in human history and was created through the cooperation of many nations and stands as a symbol of what humanity could accomplish. But that accomplishment may have not been able to happen if not for a very important piece of the construction process. And that piece is the Canada Arm. Also known as the Shuttle Remote Manipulator System, the Canada Arm has become an iconic symbol of Canada and our ingenuity. And it all started in 1969 when the Space Shuttle program was first being developed by NASA. And Canada was invited to be a participant in that program. And it was at that time that a manipulator system was identified as a being an important part of the Space Shuttle program. And after a lot of talk, NASA awarded the manipulator contract to Spar Aerospace, a Canadian company. Now throughout the 1970s, the manipulator was developed through several trials and variations until it became what we all recognize. And one interesting fact about the manipulator, or the Canada Arm, is the fact that it does not have a claw at the end. And that's because Frank Mee designed the end effector of the manipulator to actually be modeled after a camera's iris rather than the claw. And this proved to be much more effective, and it's why it's now on the Canada Arm. And the Canada Arm 2, which we'll get to in a bit. Now on February 11th, 1981, an acceptance ceremony was held for NASA at SPAR's RMS division in Toronto. And it was there that Larkin Kerwin, who would become the first president of the space agency a few years later, the Canadian Space Agency, that is. And he would be the one to coin the word Canada Arm. Now, the first remote manipulator would be delivered to NASA just a few months later in April. And a total of five arms would be built. They'd be arms 201, 202, 301, 302, and 303. In 1986, arm 302 would be destroyed in the Challenger disaster. The Canada Arm was no slouch in space, and it could do a variety of tasks. It could help in spacewalks, it could help launch satellites, it could help grab satellites, it helped repair the space, uh, the, the Hubble Space Telescope. It helped on many, many different projects because it was able to deploy and grab these things, bring them into the space shuttle, take them out. In all, it could move over 700 pounds in space. And that's pretty impressive for the Arm. Eventually, the International Space Station was being developed, so the arm had to be upgraded and redesigned so that it could move 7,000 pounds in space. The Canada arm measures 50 feet by 15 inches wide. It has six degrees of freedom, allowing it to move in almost any direction, and itself weighs 900 pounds. And over the course of its service with the Space Shuttle program, it would fly on 90 missions, completing a multitude of large tasks, many that would have been impossible without the Canada Arm. And on the 90th and final shuttle mission in July of 2011, the Canada Arm was officially retired. But the Canada Arms are still around. Today, one Canada Arm from the Space Shuttle Discovery is at the National Air and Space Museum in Washington, D.C. Endeavour's Canada Arm is currently on display at the Canada Aviation and Space Museum in Ottawa. But what about the Canada Arm 2? Well, Canada Arm 2 is in operation on the International Space Station, and it serves as a much more advanced version of the original. It was launched and installed in April of 2001, and it's 58 feet long and weighs over 4,000 pounds. On November 13, 2012, the Canada Arm was honored by Google Canada on its main page with a doodle of the Canada Arm to honor the 31st anniversary of it being in space. This has been Canadian History X. I hope you enjoyed the episode, and if you did, please like and subscribe on iTunes and on our YouTube page. You can find all of the links to everything on our blog at CanadaXEHX.com.
www.blogspot.ca. Thanks for listening.